All right, guys. Well, if you saw the last video, you know that we now finally have a garage of our own big two car garage. I am so, so, so pumped to finally have my own garage. That was literally the biggest hurdle of the channel of progressing. If you guys didn't know, for those that are new to the channel or just maybe unfamiliar with the process, I basically, every time I worked on the cars, had to go 45 minutes to my parents' house, or, you know, 20, 30 minutes to my parents' house, or end up working out in the weather at our condo before. So it was just, you know, I made it work, but to be honest, way too much energy got poured into navigating that hurdle versus just being able to walk outside and have my own garage to work on the cars. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to have this. I'm so grateful. Thank you to the universe, to the angels watching above. It's uh, surreal finally to have this right now. And uh, yeah, I just, I can't wait. You guys saw, obviously we got the C36 now, the C55, the E420, the SUVs, all of them can get a lot of love and uh, just a lot more progression uh, rapidly. Fill you guys in a little bit more, but this is where it's at for now. I gotta get it set up properly. Obviously we've just been moving everything over. Got kind of all the boxes I have been uh, putting some wall ornaments. Got the bumper up there. The uh, steering wheel from the W124, C55 airbox, and some uh, manual pedals. So, lots of stuff. The only whip inside of here right now is that, but uh, that'll change here shortly. We're gonna try to round up all the cars. We got both the SUVs here right now. We're gonna go pick up the other ones here shortly, but yeah, we've just been busting our butts, trying to get everything moved over. And I uh, need to update this board, obviously. Pretty sure a lot of that stuff is already checked off. So we'll have an official spot to really like hang out together Have everything in one place. You guys actually get to see all the parts that I have now like All of these are full of parts. Those are full of parts All of this used to be hiding on our back patio in our condo and now get to actually Have it readily available. So I don't have to try to just jump through a bunch of hoops to get little things done. I don't have to carry around a bag of miscellaneous tools. Now I can get an actual, you know, workbench with my tools organized. And yeah, I'm again, beyond excited. Thank you guys so much for sticking with the channel all this time without me really having my own space. It's uh, been a journey, needless to say. So having this now, we're gonna hit the ground running guys. I'm, I'm excited to see where we can go from here, just having this now. So anyways, just wanted to fill you guys in while we're moving. I'll catch you guys later once we get this a little more settled and we should have a few cars here. As a matter of fact, if I position myself right here, according to uh, YouTube theory, we should be able to uh, fit a couple cars in here in about three, two, one, zero. I think the YouTube magic worked. Got the cars here. Need to get you guys updated what's going on exactly. But uh, yeah, super stoked to get the cars here. C36, got his Washington plates now. We're gonna go over kind of a in-depth list of all the things I'm gonna be kind of ordering and trying to fix on this car. Uh, it is in great shape considering it's 30 years old and you know, probably was being driven around the city most of its life. Uh, and hopefully garage kept it looks like um, just in the condition it's in but we're gonna make a list and kind of go from there but for now uh, I need to pull the c55 out I'm gonna get that thing washed off as well because anything in the garage I'm gonna make the rule of it needs to be clean to be in here to change my ways because you guys know me I hardly ever wash the cars before so uh, <laughs> we're gonna get into a new habit with that I'm gonna organize a bit more of all the mess I have on the right side right now, kind of figure out where I actually wanna keep everything. And then again, like I said, we'll uh, finish out this video today. I'm making a list and kind of telling you guys what the plan is exactly for this car. Like, what am I gonna do with it? What's the plans? What's the build gonna be like? 
many of you guys are already, you know, guesstimating that it will be manual swapped. And to be honest, I haven't decided myself. Uh, honestly, it's pretty damn good the way it is. And I actually enjoy the vacuum controlled four speeds when they're in good shape. And the ones that came in these cars had a little bit of a modification and it, it shifts great. It, it really does feel good. So I got to kind of make a decision on that in the future, but that's down the line for the time being. I just want to get it sorted, make sure it's properly mechanically sorted. And then we can start thinking about, you know, manual swaps, turbos, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know. It's in the works, definitely, as far as like what the big game plan is for this car. But overall, uh, I'm enjoying it as is right now. So we're just going to get it kind of up to spec. Let's get this thing pulled out and uh, get ourselves some room, get it ready to wash anyways, and uh, enjoy this beautiful day with our beautiful view of these cars. All right, you guys got the C55 started and uh, sitting there kind of warming up. We'll watch that in a second. Cool thing too, I think it was happier sitting in the garage because normally after a few days of battery it would be flat, but uh, started right up, so that's cool. Um, I need to, again, we're gonna get to it. Just give me a little bit, uh, well, short time for you guys but we're gonna go over the list properly i can tell you guys something right off the bat when i pressure washed it i knew it was going to be kind of a risk but i also didn't really care because if there's paint spots that were coming off that easy then i want to redo it anyways but uh definitely some uh, paint loss on the side skirt it looks like this was probably i don't know pump bumped up against something at some point and kind of spider cracked the paint uh, as well as on the back side here so Luckily the uh, plastic is black underneath, so on a black car you're not gonna notice it a ton. But still, we'll plan to repaint those. Um, so anyways, we're gonna do a proper walkthrough. Like I said, list by list. We'll put it on the whiteboard and everything so you guys can look at it and have an idea of what we're gonna do. We gotta erase all this old stuff because most of that is done. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna organize this stuff. I need to figure out where exactly everything's gonna go, where my fluids are gonna live, where my tools are gonna live, where my parts are gonna live, etc. And uh, just kind of whittle my way at this. This is a lot of stuff going on. Moving is not easy and it just takes forever, especially that last 10%. I'm sure you guys know this. All of us have probably moved many times or at least one time in a lifetime. So, uh, all right, let's go start up the C36 as well. One thing to uh, start off the list right now, it's got kind of a weird um, like pop in the stereo system when it is uh, turning on. So we're gonna need to figure that out. I, I did get the uh, radio working. I think that I showed you guys a clip of that. Put the code in, hit tune, and it turned on. The speakers are working fine in the front, but the rears are definitely kind of weird. And the volume knob also has the common issue on these Becker sound systems where turning it to the right doesn't always make it go up. It kind of like is random. The back speakers are definitely blown out, so I gotta check the amp. But anyways, let's uh, start this thing real quick. So if you heard that, there was like a, a pop right when it started from the speakers. So it's definitely kind of doing something weird. Also, by the way, for the people curious while we were driving home, it's just washer fluid that had the light on. Um, everything else was uh, off, but I think I have some washer fluid in the E420, so we'll throw some in here to get rid of that. You wanna hear something else we need to do? <laughs> the brakes are definitely gonzo. Um, front brakes, the rotors at least are god not happy all right well yeah got this thing positioned nicely to do a proper in-depth kind of sort through on it or look through make a list like we said and uh kind of go from there all right guys another thing real quick to throw in the list so if you can hear that sound pulley or something is making noise so we're definitely gonna have to figure that one out uh, as far as the engine goes like engines running nice and smooth you can hear it's nice and crisp but somewhere along this side could be the tensioner could be the pulley could just be the belt worn out but uh, something's definitely making noise until it gets up to temp when you drive it then it's, it goes away so 
most likely a pulley or something like that. Also, supposedly this has a K&N filter in it, so I want to take this off to check. Uh, other things we'll be looking through, I want to check the wiring, I want to check a lot of little things on this, so we'll keep plugging away at it. You guys, would you just look at this thing though? I cannot get over this. I'm telling you guys, I am so in love with the W202. I have been, for those that don't know, W202 was my first Mercedes I ever had. I had a C230 compressor, I'll pop it up on screen right here. I loved that car, absolutely loved that car, and unfortunately, it got hit and uh, was totaled. That's when I got into my first W203, which was also a C230 compressor, and that's what I traded for this. Got really lucky, haggled the dealership like the most insane. There's a story on my channel actually of how I got this car, but that's how I ended up with the C55. Then we got the ML55. Then we got this. Then we got the ML63. Then we went all the way full circle back to the W202, and I am so pumped to have this thing. I'm gonna call it right now. I'm a basketball player. I grew up playing basketball. This is my starting five, all right? <laughs> this is what we're gonna call this bunch. This is the starting five. I'm gonna try to come up with some merch designs for that too. Starting five is definitely the way I wanna go. And it's a great starting five to have. I'm gonna say, this is my point guard. This is my shooting guard. Let's say uh, we'll play the E420 kind of power forward. Now we got, uh, let's play, uh, I guess we're doing two bigs, I guess. I'll do kind of, let's say, shooting big and just the beast big down low. Yeah, we got Kobe. We'll say, I don't know who I want to run at point guard. Someone crafty. It's got to be like, like a, like a, oh, okay. Kyrie, Kobe, Scotty Pippen. KG's popping up in my head right now. KG. No, we gotta have we gotta have Shaq though too. Maybe let's just Shaq, this KG, maybe Tim Duncan, somebody like that. But that's my starting five guys. And for those of you that don't play basketball or don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, that's just where my mind is at all the time. These things have been warming up for a while. I'm shut this thing off. Get the washer fluid out of the tank. Wash that thing up. Let's go. So yeah, speaking of brakes, guys, these things have a gigantic lip on them, uh, and who knows what the pads look like, but. I actually today want to go pick up a floor jack and jack stands. I have one set of jack stands, but I'm going to get this thing up on all fours tomorrow. Actually, Motorsports Hardware, shout out to them. They uh, are the first official sponsor of the build. They sent out a lug stud conversion kit, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, I did go with a 75 millimeter, uh, so that should stay behind the monoblocks. It shouldn't poke out at all. Um, and I do think maybe eventually i'll test out how everything's look but this car does sit pretty flush this, this car does sit pretty flush from factory but i thought about right maybe running like a 10 mil spacer to uh just kind of bring it out a little bit a little more aggressive stance it does have a little room to go so we could do that uh, but yeah that'll be tomorrow so i want to get the wheels pulled off and uh, get it up on all fours and that way we can kind of properly inspect underneath and add to our list so So yeah, that said, uh, also when I pull the wheel off, I'll be able to take that center cap off and replace it with the one that I have in the proper color. We'll be able to clean the wheels a little bit further uh, and just kind of give this thing a more thorough clean. The wash that I did didn't really do much, so I'm gonna need to redo that. It's still got a ton of spots in it and we're gonna have to paint correct this thing for sure. Uh, I also need to get the glass cleaned up because it has all of this if you guys have any recommendations for this let me know i'm gonna try some like rubbing alcohol and maybe a, a plastic razor blade or something to try to scrape that off because that seems to be stuck i did get the sticker off of the back but somebody put tape over this and the actual red lens is not in the best of shape so i'm gonna pull this out and try to refurbish this or i can always just try to look for one in the junkyard uh, since w202s at least are fairly common to pop up in the pick and pulls around here yeah there's a lot of stuff to do guys and i feel pretty overwhelmed i'm not gonna lie with everything going on in life right now but i'm just trying to plug away at each little thing my mom always said to me growing up and it's stuck in my head forever it will always be in my head forever how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time and no i have no plans of physically eating an elephant and don't mean that to you know harm in any means i love elephants but when you have a big problem how do you tackle it 
It's just one step at a time and that's what we've been doing lately. The common uh, modern metaphor that I've changed that to is how do you eat a pizza one slice at a time? So that's what we've been doing. It's been so much work getting everything over to the house. The fact that we don't have like internet running right now has been causing a bunch of webs. Uh, so we are just going through things, trying to get everything sorted. But all right, one other thing to add to the list right now, since I'm noticing, I'm just gonna record them as I notice, but the uh, hood latches are kind of sagging a bit. It did fall down on me the other day, actually, when I was doing something. So it's not, they're not terrible, but they definitely don't hold as tight as they should. Um, this one, luckily, just like E420 and most Mercedes has the spots where you can lock it in place. But uh, we'll see if there's, if you guys know, is there a way to adjust these or tighten these so that they kind of stay in place a little more? I've never actually had to do that. I don't know if these are bolts that you can tighten or yeah, what you need to do to get these to stay a little better, but we'll definitely do that so that I don't get a hood crunch in my head. But let's go ahead and fill this thing up. It seems like it's just empty right now. I don't see any cracks in it. It does have a little bit of water that's holding at the bottom. Uh, the pump assembly is all there. Like it looks in pretty good shape overall. Um, it is missing one of the little hold downs right there, but it should be fine. So let's go ahead and fill it up and see what we get. Something that's pretty impressive about this car is like a lot of the rubber trim is still in really good shape. Like it's definitely dirty. I'm going to clean this up obviously, but like this, even on my 203, the, the headlight um, seals are shot. So this thing is like, they're all nice and supple. They're still in really good shape. I just need to clean everything up. All the plastics on this car, it's another thing that I'll be going through, but like all of this trim, we're gonna clean up really well and ceramic coat so that it can kind of restore some life into it. Like the door handles are gonna make a huge difference. Um, all the trim around here, any plastic trim within the car, we're also gonna do the rear tray. I'm gonna use the uh, vinyl spray on that that I did with the C55. You guys can see what that one looks like compared to that. <coughs> well anyway as you can see it's nice and dark how it should be from factory so that one uh, we'll do the same treatment on this because obviously sitting out in the california sun it's not even as bad as my uh, c55 was but you can see that's kind of the color it used to be and uh now it's more of that purple color so we'll be able to do that and while we take that out anyways we'll be able to inspect if the speakers are in fact bad or Maybe before that, we can get into the amplifier and see what that thing looks like. So the list, you guys, it's overwhelming, like I said, but one step at a time, one bite at a time. Definitely want to do the valve cover soon. I think I'm going to go with like a, basically like a, like a white with a little bit of silver thrown into it. Uh, it won't be exactly this cream color, but I think it'll be a really close kind of cool uh, color to work on it. And we'll do all like nice hardware the hardware actually looks like it's in really good shape so we'll clean it up good and uh, do kind of the same process that we did on the uh, c55 intake manifold with the brush on paint i don't even have to do the spray on paint so we'll do it proper the amg badge definitely needs to be redone so i'll try to uh clean that off and get that redone do all the black in between because this is a valuable piece this is a very valuable piece i'm going to redo this we talked about um, the plastic is just kind of eating away at itself. It looks like somebody probably didn't remove it properly at some point. Or just popped out the front cover. It looks like somebody resealed the uh, cam timer or cam timer solenoid. I can't remember what they're called exactly. But uh, yeah, besides that, like it's dirty in here, but it's dry, which is a great sign. Um, I'll need to get a, a light in here so I can see properly. But let's see if you can see. I don't see any numbers on the belt. The belt tension feels good. So I don't think the tensioner is gonna be an issue, but it's definitely a pulley of some kind. Uh, for those that haven't worked on the M104 202s, uh, they are definitely a tight squeeze in the front. So uh, I'll have to figure out the best measures to uh, get my hands in here. I know the fan shroud, typically you're gonna take it off. These, does ha these do have a clutched fan, so that stays here. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, figure out the best way to get to everything shortly i've never owned one of these cars fully so i've only like inspected them and you know done a little bit of research but i've never had my hands on them to freely wield wrenches and things at them and uh figure them out so i'm 
really, really, really excited to gain some knowledge on M104. Fan for a long time of this engine. And like I said in the last video, uh, it's got a ton of aftermarket support. Well, maybe not a ton, but a ton compared to like these cars. So it's really cool to at least be in that platform. An idea I'll throw at you guys right now, which I don't know, but let me know what you guys think. I really want to learn how to do standalone ECUs, and I feel like this would be a great starting point to kind of figure it out. It's a little easier as far as wiring goes than the V8s, and it's you know not as modern as those, so it might be a little simpler. Um, but yeah, I, I would really like to figure out how to get a standalone setup, and I think this car could be a great one to do so with. That would also give us the you know affordability of uh, later on if we did decide to put a manual in it. Um, being able to kind of do that much easier. So anyways, thought bubbles popping up. All right, guys, first little job done. Washer fluid is in the tank and uh, looks like it's holding just fine. So let's go uh, test it out. See if that light went away, number one, and see if we can get some spray out of the uh, hood nozzles. All right, this thing also needs to go. This thing is literally just zip tied on here. I'm gonna need to follow these wires. I need to make sure what they are plugged into exactly so that uh, if I remove them, I'm not gonna like mess up anything or make it so it's not able to start. So, All right, first thing I notice as far as vacuum lines go, you guys see this, this green line, it's literally like pinched. I don't know where this goes to uh, on that side, but I do know it plugs in right here. This looks like, uh, uh, I don't know, not a map, but like some type of pressure sensor. Uh, so I'll have to see what that is, but maybe I should uh, sort that real quick. All right, just gonna flip that around. Should be getting flow, at least for now I can replace all these lines later. I have a lot of good stuff left over, but honestly, overall, like these lines look like they're still in really good shape. You can tell right away, like if they're real brittle or yellowed or, like this one looks not as good as the top one, but it's still not bad. We are definitely gonna try to simplify as much of the system as possible. You guys know me, I'm a big uh, delete guy. So we're gonna keep it, you know, happy factory, but we're gonna get rid of any unnecessary components. That's another, you know, reason why a standalone seems very attractive for an older kind of platform like this. All right guys, sorry, my phone was recording on startup, but. No more washer lights. Those things work just fine. And it actually started up a little quieter um, after doing that vacuum line. So I wonder, uh, maybe it was just cause it was warmed up a little bit, but it started up nice. So let's keep spelunking and see what we find. Another thing since I'm here, uh, common, common issue. This thing is all cracked up. I'll try to find a replacement for this. Uh, and then the C36 shifter is still in good shape but it is definitely faded. So I'll definitely need to repaint the gray part at very least. The black part still looks like it's in good shape, but gray part will definitely repaint. All right, you guys, we just got a special visitor. Marky boy and Sarah. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to show you guys his truck. So he just came by, He's just letting it run. It's nice, huh? <laughs> Pretty cool. Sarah goes, I love the one windshield wiper. I know. <laughs> Mono wiper for the win. <laughs> oh, did they take off the... They yeah, they switch. The... I've never seen this specific like center badge, but it like normally has one. a star. But it's an actual Mercedes one, which I've yeah, never yeah. seen that one, so. My mom's car had one like this. Yeah, the... yeah normally the newer cars have those. Yeah. But this is what I want to show you guys. To the Toyota Mark just Toyota. got a sick Tacoma from uh, our friend. Shout out to Paymont too. The yeah, but this thing, classy. Welcome. It's nice. How many miles are on it again? 110. 110, dude. Yeah, it's in really good condition, man. What year is it? 98. Oh man. Yeah, you don't find them that low mileage. This thing's sick, dude. What's this little guy? Oh, that's for towing. It's like oh, okay. Tow capacity. Dang. Yeah, man. It's got nice. the original uh, pinstripes. <laughs> All right, the truck boy Mays just saw it. Dang, bro. <laughs> he said, "Dang, bro, you like this truck? Pretty sick, huh? Nah, yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you. Dude, runs like a top. This thing sounds fantastic. Dude, the motor sounds great. Probably a wealthy guy in Millbrae, California. I don't even think I mentioned, guys. I was so, like, flustered in the first video on this car, but we should probably start out by saying this is a one-owner car. It was sold or ended up in auction somehow. I'm guessing what typically happens is uh, whoever owns a car, and it was dealer serviced, so whoever owns the car, you know, say they have it for a long time, they want to trade in for something newer at the dealership, which kind of sucks because normally they just trade it in like some like cookie cutter car, but traded it in the dealership when they're this old, don't even touch them. They just send them straight to auction and that's how we ended up finding it. So lucky for me, but kind of sad for a car like this to just get pawned off to an auction, but thankfully it fell into my hands. But yeah, one owner, 120,000 miles. And like I just told Mark, it was serviced in uh, Millbrae, uh, San Francisco area, its whole life pretty much uh, by the dealer. And uh, yeah, probably should have included that right away, but didn't at the beginning. <laughs> if you get a boo-boo, we can heal you up, dude. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mark was uh, commenting about your... Uh, <laughs> Is commenting about your uh, exploration of the back seat in the video. I got a couple messages about that actually. People are laughing at that. <laughs> so crazy, I know. I was so nervous, man. We were like <clears throat> um, all planned out, like we need to stop at a parts store before yeah. we leave, like get tools, whatever. And then me and Mike drove it the first time with the guy, and um, we were just like, it feels good. Like yeah. let's let's just send it. So we took off for 800 miles and. That's crazy. Thankfully, she was happy Very the whole cute. time. Really? Yeah, no, like, absolutely zero hiccups, hesitations, anything. It was just like, let's go. I think it was happy, man. Yeah. They got, like, spirits. They got happy that I was taking it home. Had to stretch its legs. Yeah. All right, guys, did confirm. Like I mentioned earlier, it does have a K&N filter. Let's see what this thing looks like. Not bad. Definitely could be cleaned, but... It's at least lifetime. I'll probably try to see if I can find an AEM one because I don't like the oiled filters, but it'll do for now. That's why we were getting good intake noise, so that makes sense. There's the old school math. All right, guys, we're taking a little joy ride. Mark's gonna take us off-roading in the taco. Let's see where we go. We're cruising, baby. It's smooth. Yeah. Ooh, I like the floor mats. Yee! Alright, we're trading rides now. C55 hasn't got a cruise in a while, so we're gonna take this one out before the C36. to the C55 for driving it like shit right now. 
<laughs> that was the first time I ever did that. I just burned the clutch so bad on accident. Okay, ready for the C36? Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Alright guys, another thing that's been bothering me is this seatbelt was flipped around. Did you get it? Wait, no. It's still switching to flip. So I'm trying to fix this real quick. Can manual swap a Mercedes but can't flip a seatbelt. <laughs> hey. Alright, one other little thing fixed guys. Seatbelt's rotated the right way. He's bugging my OCD. Only took him 15 minutes. <sighs> What's your favorite feature on this car? Motor. Okay. And let's think. Let's. What about aesthetically? Uh, the outside, just like the monoblocks, wheels, and the. I don't know. Just the overall shape. This is my favorite Mercedes chassis. It's also it was my first, so it's a special. Yeah. Special chassis to me. Interior is cool too. Shifter is cool. The steering wheel is cool. The cluster is cool. That guy on the bike is cool. <laughs> what up? What kind of aftermarket struts would you put on this car? Bill Stein. Or a coilovers. But probably just keep it factory. Bilstein B8. Is there a way of purchasing uh, the original factory parts for this still? Does Mercedes keep those in stock? It'll have the equivalent. It probably won't. Some of the original AMG shocks are socks, but socks doesn't really produce them anymore. So it's going to be Bilstein or like a socks variant that's not the exact same as AMG. The Mercedes Classic Center though is pretty good about like replenishing parts like that, but yeah, not. Uh, I'm not sure about stuff like that yet. Might be not old enough. All right, guys, a little cruise complete again. Another uh, added to the list. That center section by the diff, the exhaust is leaking. We've got a water puddle over here and a puddle when we were leaving. I already noticed that, like I said, when before we even left California, so that'll help it run a little smoother as well once we get that tightened up. We gotta get it lifted up. I gotta go buy a floor jack and two more jack stands from uh, Harbor Fate later on, but what'd you think? Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> yeah, doing pretty good. Peace to Mark and Sarah. That was cool. We had a fun day. Anyways, we'll get back to it. Got to finish up the list, guys. I'm going to try to make an actual checklist, like I said, and we'll sort through everything. Um, CBD5. <laughs> the dual mass works fine in there, but I really want to beat on the car. I got to get a single mass set up for that car. I got to figure it out, so that's got to be coming up soon. Anyways, I'm taking a break for a little bit. I'll catch you guys in a few seconds. All right, guys, later on in the day, I think we're uh, shortly going to wrap up this video. I gotta watch C55 still, went in and took a break for a while. Um, another thing to add to the list right now, washer fluid is definitely leaking. It looks like it's leaking from the front somewhere over here. So maybe one of the hoses that connects to the uh, headlight washers or something uh, is definitely leaking. So there's a reason why that was empty. We'll look into that later on, but uh, I made a list here. I don't have my proper Sharpie or uh, dry erase markers. I only have the tiny one and it's not writing very well So I'm not even gonna bother putting it on there. I'll grab some more from work tomorrow, but I did write it down on an actual uh, list here, so We got engine bay valve cover belt noise. You got to discover exactly what's going on there Check all the vacuum lines oil change. You got to get the right spec oil in it Make sure just I always like to do that when I first get cars remove the alarm that's in there figure out if it's tied into any other wiring uh, clean the air filter and then overall just kind of inspect things especially once we have the valve cover off That'll give us a good idea of things overall um, And the body and chassis interior kind of bits and pieces. We got door seals gonna do the paint correction obviously exhaust leak uh, the front grill pieces talking about 
those ones right there, which are pretty hard to find, but we'll do our best. See if we can find something for those. Uh, we got fog lights. We gotta check if they're working. I don't know if they are working right now or not. Do you guys know, is there a special uh, spot to turn them on? Was I not looking in the correct spot? Let's see. Uh, oh, maybe it's these. I didn't even notice there was a switch here. I don't know. Oh, maybe that's for the alarm, actually. That looks like aftermarket almost. Because I thought for the fog lights, you just turn these over and then pull out. But that only turns the... Um, other lights on. And even when I had it running, let's try to let's start it up again. Um... See what's going on here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure what this is actually, guys. Let me know if you know what this is for. I don't know if that's factory or not. Um, but if we, yeah, we're not getting any fog lights. So, that means either the bulbs are out or something else. Maybe they're not connected. We need to look into that. So, we'll add that to the list, I guess. Sorry to keep turning this thing off and on. Um, definitely sounds like potentially we got some vacuum leaks somewhere. Like, if you heard that right now when we were shutting it down seemed like it kept like for a while but maybe that's just still pulling vacuum through the uh, intake after it's shutting off but we'll give it a good look through um i was gonna actually go get the other jack sands and the floor jack today but harbor Fro harbor freight closes super early on sunday so we'll have to save that for next video expect wednesday have it on the lift etc uh, but let's keep going through the rest of this list uh so fog lights we'll look into to see if they work um, PDR for the fender right there. Damn, this thing is taking a while to uh, focus. But side, side skirt paint and refinishing the wheels. Those are kind of longer term things. And then we also added uh, refinishing the glass. Amplifier check to see if those uh, rear speakers are going to come back to life. Third brake light. Brakes definitely probably all around. Um, trans and engine mounts we'll have to inspect, shifter bushing we'll check while we're under there, check the rear diff if it's leaking at all, just overall condition of the bushings back there, subframe bushings, and then check suspension. So not a crazy long list, but still a long enough list where it's going to take us a little bit to sort through it and order the correct parts and all that stuff. Like for example, the front brakes on these, uh, the first two years used the SL600 brakes and you kind of have to like see what you got from reading around to know exactly what size rotors you have. Um, the video on the reveal for the C36 is the best video as far as like stats and all that stuff that the channel's ever had. Um, like as far as the starting point, not the overall views obviously, but um, that's like the most engagement, the most uh, of all the stats really that I've ever got on a normal video, not a reel or something like that. So. That was really exciting to see. I appreciate you guys uh, showing love to the video. And it kind of tells me that you guys are excited about this car and I am really, really excited about this car. There's still just like surprisingly isn't that much DIY stuff on the C36. There's a lot for 202s. There's a lot for, you know, even like 203s and, and all that stuff. But like C43s have some but not a lot on the C36, surprisingly. Even like feature videos and in-depth stuff, like there's just not as much as I would have thought knowing what this car is. And I guess that's just because the people that usually have their hands on these are not typically people that are gonna be, I don't know, making YouTube videos or something, but it was surprising to see and it's exciting for me knowing that I can bring a little bit of content towards your guys' way, so. It's, like I said, got great bones. Now it is time for us to really get things to match up and get it happy 
all the way sorted um, and just enjoy it and take pride in owning it take pride in owning all the rest of the cars I really feel bad about burning the clutch earlier in the C55 that was such a weird scenario I just I didn't pedal it quite correctly. It's the first time I've ever done that and I just kind of mess it up I took it for a drive after it's still driving fine but still I felt bad I did that so yeah That'll go ahead and do it guys. I hope you are excited and looking forward to not only this car's journey, but the rest of the car's journey, knowing that we finally have a proper space and garage to do all the work in and I can just step outside and be able to work in here. Don't have to drive, don't have to you know, work out in the rain, don't have to do all the extra stuff that I was having to do to get the, the jobs done in the car. So that's such a relief on my part. Um, it's just awesome. So I look forward to it. I'm blabbering. I've talked a lot in this video, I'm sure, but I appreciate you guys sticking around and I will see you on Wednesday. Appreciate you guys. See you on the next one. Peace.